Hey everybody, welcome. I'm here with Wash. Wash is the product manager of Systems Toolkit. And Wash is going to give you the quick rundown of all the new stuff in the SDK 11.7, which is coming out this fall. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. Um, so, for the first thing on the list is analyzer parallelization. Now, if you're an analyzer user, you know that analyzer allows you to optimize your trade studies. Well, with the 11.7, we've added the ability to now take advantage of uh, high-performance computing resources that you may have. So now your, your optimization studies can now run uh, at much um, greater speed. Uh, you can do more iterations. You can get more refined results because now you have the ability to take advantage of of all the computing resources available to you. That's great for everybody out there pursuing digital engineering and digital mission engineering and the, the size of the problems that now you can you can apply that to. Uh, absolutely. The next uh, item is the uh, multifunction radar, which is sort of a follow-on from SDK 11.6, where we introduce the ability to have multiple beams that are independently tasked. In this release, now, along with the multiple beams, you have the ability to uh, do a range-based waveform. So. So for each beam, the beam has the ability to select the waveform that's actually employed based on range to the particular target uh, that might be tracking. So if you're modeling existing uh, radar systems that have well-defined range ranges for each waveform, you can model that. Or if you're doing a mission-specific design and trying to ultimately decide on what the right triggers should be for uh, switching waveforms, and then you have the ability to model that now uh, as part of the multifunction radar capability. Uh, the next item on the list is for Astrogator. Well, there are multiple features that are, that are added to Astrogator, but there are two primary ones that we'll talk about. The first is the ability to do the circular restricted three-body problem. If you're familiar with what's uh, commonly referred to as CR3BP. Um, Who isn't? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's not a Star Wars character. Um, <laughs> this is essentially a, a tool for uh, planning trajectories when you have multiple uh, large bodies that are exerting a gravitational force on a spacecraft that uh, is either traversing uh, between the two or stationed at what maybe a libration point uh, between the two large bodies. And so this is a tool that allows uh, trajectory designers to come up with uh, first approximations of uh, those trajectories before moving on to uh, more complex and detailed models. The additional astrogator feature is now the ability to add uh, a throttle table engine model. So if you're modeling a specific spacecraft and its ability to maneuver in orbit, uh, typically a manufacturer of that spacecraft will provide you with a thrust table that defines the performance of that engine based on the different settings. So now you have the ability to actually incorporate that into uh, astrogator to more uh, accurately model the performance of that engine and the ability to perform specific maneuvers. Uh, the next thing are support for cool graphics. And with our latest release of, of SDK, um, you're now able to uh, access uh, 3D tiles that are hosted on uh, cesium, um, cesium ion. So for those of us, or those of you who may not have access to our geospatial content server uh, on premise with uh, your own collection of 3D tiles. Uh, you have the option of reaching out to uh, cesium ion and pointing to a specific collection there. And what you see currently on the screen is actually AGI headquarters that's uh, rendered as a 3D tile um, uh, model that's hosted on the cesium ion server that we're now just pointing to and pulling into to SDK. So again, this is an option. If you don't have the on-premise solution, um, you can point to a collection that's hosted uh, online that's either your own curated collection or someone else's curated collection that they've given you access to. And it works great in SDK. Thanks, Wash. Is that it? <clears throat> no. Oh, OK. <laughs> and then um, That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is trying to get rid of me. <laughs> I thought you were done. I said that was the last thing. Last but not least, um, we've added a feature that's not completely 
baked at the moment, let's say. Um, it's essentially the ability to do a schedule-driven uh, sensor. So essentially, you can have a schedule that changes its definition based on specific time uh, increments that the user defines. And uh, the idea behind uh, having, having that type of sensor model is to essentially, again, as Josh mentioned earlier, um, as you move more and more into the digital mission engineering um, um, realm, uh, you need the ability to model various behaviors that occur based on other events that might occur during your simulation. So this gives users the option to have a sensor that's essentially changing its definition over time. The reason I say it's not completely baked as of yet is that it's only available uh, through Connect, which is one of our APIs that allows you to remotely drive SDK. In future releases, um, we'll add more features that'll be part of the user interface, and there'll be more options for how you define the sensor, along with the pointing attitude as well. So with that, uh, we'll wrap it up. That's, uh, that's our highlight that's all the list. Stuff. So, Great. Thanks, Wash. And be sure to check out these other videos that go into a little bit more detail about each one of those topics. And they're presented by usually the developer that helped implement them and lead the development of them. So check out those other videos. Thanks for watching.